Hey everyone, it's Sarah with Nurse RN.com, and in this video, I'm going to be covering aminoglycosides. So let's get started. Aminoglycosides are a particular group of antibiotics that target mainly gram negative microorganisms. Therefore, they're really gram negative killers because they have this bactericidal effect on the bacteria where they go in and just kill it rather than just inhibiting its growth, which would be known as having a bacteriostatic effect. Now, as I cover the different types, types of antibiotics in this series, you're going to see that some antibiotics are really good at killing bacteria, whereas other types just really inhibit their growth. So what gram-negative bacteria do aminoglycosides target? Well, they target E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Serratia marcescens, and Enterobacter. Now, they're not really helpful with targeting gram-positive microorganisms, but they can kill a few, such as Staphylococcus aureus and then Enterococcus. Furthermore, aminoglycosides can target mycobacteria infections, such as Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So because of all these microorganisms that aminoglycosides can target, they're really good at treating certain cases of septicemia, where we have infection in the blood, severe cases of urinary tract infection, and then infections that affect certain parts of the body, such as the eyes, the ears, the bone, the abdomen, the pelvic areas, and they can treat cases of endocarditis where you have infection in the heart, specifically on those heart valves, and then severe cases of pneumonia that are usually acquired from the hospital setting because those strains tend to be very severe. Now in practice, you may see that aminoglycosides are used in combination with other types of antibiotics. And the reason for this is because whenever you throw an aminoglycoside on, let's say with penicillin, it all of a sudden has a synergistic effect, which means it allows that aminoglycoside to work in ways where it normally wouldn't be able to work if it wasn't on board with this other type of medication. So let's say we have penicillin and aminoglycoside on. Well, aminoglycoside without penicillin normally wouldn't be able to get inside that cell wall and kill it. But because we have penicillin on board, we have the synergistic effect and aminoglycoside is able to get in and target that bacteria. So how do we remember the medications that are included with the aminoglycosides? Well, let's remember the word NATS, G-N-A-T-S. So the G-N part is gonna help you remember that aminoglycosides mainly target gram-negative microorganisms. So the G is for gentamicin, N is for neomycin, A is for amicacin, T is for tobramycin, and then the last one, S, is for streptomycin. Now, as you can see, these medications in in mycin, whether M-I-C-I-N or M-Y-C-I-N, but don't let that tip you off that it's an aminoglycoside because some other groups of antibiotics, such as the microlides, they end in M-Y-C-I-N. Some of them do, like erythromycin. So that might throw you off and get you a little confused. So just try to remember the names with this mnemonic and just know that unfortunately it doesn't follow that rule that sometimes we can use with those names. Now how are aminoglycosides administered? Well this particular group of medications doesn't like to be absorbed through the gut so we don't like to give them orally but rather we like to give them via the parental route so the IM or IV route. Now there are some exceptions to this depending on what's going on with the patient. For instance Tobramycin can be given via inhalation to patients who have cystic fibrosis and they have a lung infection. Or we can give neomycin via the oral route if we're trying to target certain bacteria in the gut. For instance, if the patient has hepatic encephalopathy, we can give them neomycin to help bring down that ammonia level. Or let's say the patient's having bowel surgery, we can give them this to help prep that bowel before they actually have surgery. So now let's talk about how aminoglycosides work and how they actually kill that bacteria. Well, depending on the antibiotic group you're talking about, they will target certain parts of that bacteria cell. Some will inhibit the cell wall synthesis of that bacteria, while others will inhibit nucleic acid synthesis, and then some will inhibit protein synthesis within that bacteria cell. And that is what aminoglycosides do. They inhibit protein synthesis inside that bacteria cell, so we don't get the creation of proteins. 
Now, proteins are really important for that bacterial survival. It's really the backbone of its ability to thrive and survive. So if we can stop that process of that bacteria that's inhabited our body, we can kill it and get rid of it. And that's what aminoglycosides do. So what makes the proteins in that bacteria cell? It is the ribosome. So remember ribosome. It's it's what we're targeting. So the ribosome is a really cool structure. It is made up of two subunits. You have a large subunit known as 50S, and then you have a smaller one known as 30S. And these two subunits work together to, their whole goal is to stack amino acids together and make a beautiful polypeptide chain, hence our protein. So amino glycosides say, I need to stop this process. So I'm going to affect one of these subunits so we can't have this happen, making these polypeptide chains. So what it does is aminoglycosides binds to the 30S on the ribosome. So it binds to this subunit, particularly its A site. So remember, aminoglycoside starts with A, it targets the A site of 30S. And whenever it does this, it causes its genetic code to not be read properly. So we don't have good instructions happening here, so we're not gonna really make great healthy proteins. Instead, we're gonna make junky proteins. And junky proteins lead to the death of that bacteria. It can't function if it doesn't have healthy ones. So there we get that bacteriocidal effect, and that is how in the end, they kill the bacteria. Now let's talk about our role as a nurse whenever we're administering aminoglycosides. So before administering these medications, you wanna confirm that your patient is not allergic to them and that you've obtained any necessary cultures that have been ordered by the physician and that you are monitoring the peak and trough levels while your patient is taking this group of antibiotics. And the reason for this is because these medications are very powerful. So we wanna make sure our patient's not becoming too toxic on them because it has a very narrow therapeutic index, but we wanna make sure that the medication's being effective and that they have a enough of the medication in their system to really target that bacteria and kill it. So first let's talk about peak. So the peak is the highest concentration of the medication in the blood. So remember this medication can be given IM or IV. So if your patient's getting an IM, you would want to do a blood draw for the peak one hour after the injection. But let's say your patient is getting an IV. It's typically a 30 minute infusion. So you would want to do a blood draw about 30 minutes minutes after the infusion has been completed. And then the trough is the lowest concentration of the medication in the patient's system. And we're really interested in this level because it helps us monitor for toxicity. So if your patient's getting an IM or IV, you would just collect it, you do a blood draw right before the next dose. And then another thing you wanna be monitoring for is that this medication is working like it should. So is the medication treating this infection? What are some signs that tells you it's doing that? Well, the patient doesn't have a fever anymore. Those fevers are dropping or they just don't have one anymore. They're normal. They don't show signs and symptoms of sepsis. So their blood pressure is within normal range. It's not hypotensive. And their heart rate's within normal range. It's not tachycardic. And their white blood count is in normal range, like 5,000 to 10,000. Anything greater than that tells us, oh, the white blood cells are on board. We've got a massive infection because that's what white blood cells do. They target bacteria. So if they're elevated, that's not a good thing. Now let's talk about the toxic effects that aminoglycosides can have in your patient that you want to monitor for. So two terms I want you to remember, nephrotoxic and ototoxic. So N and O. So in aminoglycosides, remember the N and the O for nephrotoxic and ototoxic. So nephro, toxic. In medical terminology, remember nephro meant kidney. So we're talking about the kidneys. The kidneys can really be affected. And if they're affected, it could be reversed. So we can reverse the nephrotoxicity. And what happens, what increases the patient's risk of having this is that they've been using aminoglycosides for too long or they're on a really high dose. So as a nurse, what you wanna be looking out for is you wanna be looking at the patient's urinary output. Make sure that they're putting out a normal amount of urine. So typically that's 30 mLs per hour for an adult. And you wanna be looking at those labs that tells you about their renal function. These will be ordered, so you wanna look those over. Like for instance, the BUN, you wanna make sure that's within normal 
limits like 5 to 20 and their creatinine level anywhere between 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter it varies depending on male and female and then you want to look at their GFR that is a glomerular filtration rate and this is the rate that our glomerulus filters waste ions and water so anything less than 90 mLs per minute is concerning so we want to make sure that it doesn't get there now the next type of toxic your patient can experience is ototoxicity. And odo, remember, means ears. And we're specifically talking about those hearing structures in the ear. Now if your patient experiences this, unfortunately it's not likely gonna be reversed like over here with the kidneys. And what increases your patient's risk of developing this is if they're taking other medications that can really cause this to happen. For instance, if they're taking loop diuretics like furosemide, it increases the risk of them developing hearing problems. So because this medication can damage the vestibular and cochlear parts of the ears, you wanna tell your patient to monitor and to report any type of ringing in the ear, hearing loss, or feeling dizzy because this could be a sign that this medication is messing with the ears. And then lastly, this medication can cause a neuromuscular blockade. So this can be experienced through muscle weakness and respiratory failure. And it tends to happen in patients who've received neuromuscular blocking medications like during anesthesia or who have neuromuscular disorders like myasthenia gravis. So in these patients, you wanna make sure that you're on high alert for these potential problems like muscle weakness and respiratory failure that could develop while taking this medication. Okay, so that wraps up this review of over aminoglycosides. And if you'd like to watch more review lectures over antibiotics in this series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.